when that whistleblower from the Australian Bureau of Crime Intelligence told me about the Queensland story, uh, what resonated about it was that it was clear that systemic corruption was likely to be in the background because what he said had occurred was that a young police officer had been offered a bribe but offered a bribe by a superior. So that suggested the corruption went up. So I, I, I came up to, to Queensland to, to meet the copper who'd been offered the bribe and that was a, a, a powerful moment uh, in my personal memory. I can remember sitting in his home and talking to him and feeling his sense of demoralisation and defeat and seeing his wife sitting across in the other corner kind of wished I wasn't there, you know, probably going to cause them more grief. And I was really struck by that circumstance in that ordinary Australian home where um, a decent family were being corrupted and felt they couldn't do anything about it, you know. He'd been offered this money, he'd taken the money because if he didn't take the money he wouldn't be trusted by his superiors, but he didn't want to spend the money because that would be an offence to his conscience and to his wife's uh, conscience. They didn't want it, they didn't join the police force to become crooks, but the system was making them crooks. Now that circumstance made me angry and I think gave me uh, the, 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 the moral energy to pursue what became an extremely difficult story because I saw in that family's predicament a story that resonated across the nation. I'm really glad at the end of the day that I think that's the way the public saw the story too.